Thank you for the kind introduction. And I'm very pleased to present this topic to you in behalf of my co-authors, because this topic is, I think, a very important one. Knowledge-based systems are available for a long time, but I see the moment all the time newer specialized applications with a high business value. And I ask myself, why is a strategic tool like a knowledge-based configurator not like a mass product? Why is this brilliant, intelligent idea not spread more far? I think one problem is a knowledge acquisition, because the hardest challenge within is knowledge acquisition. And therefore, I present this method. To give you a clear understanding how and why we accomplished that, I want to first show you the context in which project we're integrated, the general condition. Then I want to introduce the knowledge-based engineering configurators, but because they are not very clearly defined at the moment. And then we introduce the approach, the six-step development approach. I'm working in a team, Robotop. We are eight partners, and I'm primarily for system architecture and configuration. And for the development of the configurator, I develop methods so we can accomplish this task more easy. The general aim of the Robotop project is to provide SMEs with more accessible automation solutions. Because at the moment, there's a lot of system integration. There's a high complexity. It's highly complex knowledge work. And that's also the reason why knowledge-based configurators are very useful, because they allow a structured reuse of existing knowledge. And therefore, knowledge-based configurators are the tool of the choice, and we use a constraint-based configurator. But as I mentioned, knowledge is not available in a structured form, and knowledge acquisition is one of the hardest tasks when developing a configurator. And so we address the challenge within this paper. General, there is some differentiation. A lot of people talk about engineering configurators, but I found they just mostly talk about a product configurators. And a product configurator in our definition is just to make a product available. So you have a development and then you have a product and this product is going in a configurable structure. So the classic, everybody knows that are cars, bicycles, or consumed goods. But a lot of people also mentioned like engineering configurators, when a company develops some engineering solution, make it configurable, they say it's an engineering configurator. But in our point of view, an engineering configurator, as we say, a knowledge-based engineering configurator, is more like the planning approach not of the perspective of one company it's more a generic approach like a person who is doing planning and has not one product so more the engineering side that you don't have one product you have some solution space and within you develop a configurator and therefore we defined especially like knowledge-based engineering configurators we don't have a clear structure, we have no product development, we have no clear scope of function, and with an industry there is no standard. So you, you have unknown parts, it's very important to define the scope and to make the process very, very precise. When there is a lot of standardization, then there's a product configurator based on this. But at the moment, there is no standardization. Last year, I introduced a paper Step six, we mentioned here for the development of knowledge-based configurators. But during development in this year, we also see that yeah, there's more a strategic perspective which is missing. We now have with the method I will also introduce in step six, we have an approach to acquire knowledge. But the more impact or the more important fact is that you have to know what is the configurator for, what is the scope of function, what are the functionalities, what are the user groups. And then what is also necessary, the development costs are very intense. And so over engineering would cost a lot of money. Therefore, we structured six steps and the six steps are you just have to understand the business case and the needed outputs then which stakeholders are involved. Then you need a minimal functional scope of the product configurator. Then when you acquire the knowledge for the product configurator, you have classified how deep has it to be. Is a general function enough or do you have a deep level function which is very, very precise? 
Then also a big problem is where do you get your knowledge from? If you don't have a company, there are different possibilities and we didn't found any structured form to give you an idea where you can collect the knowledge. It was also a huge problem like people, we need knowledge, but we don't know where to get it from. So it's also necessary to get an idea where to get knowledge from. And the last step, six, is a knowledge acquisition. But then all the strategic aspects are defined. So starting with step one, the strategic perspective, as I mentioned before, from Robotop are SMEs. So there is less automation, so there's a huge potential, a huge economical potential, but also some challenges. Because they are not informed, it's very hard to ramp up the project. So therefore, it's necessary to make it easy, to make it standardized, and to use business cases, which are very often. The margin is not so high. You have more customers. So therefore, we analyzed the market, and so we focused on handling and assembling because there are good use cases, especially machine loading and a modular assembly cell for the real business case. The next step is when you are within, you have also to understand the processes and the output documents. So we analyzed, we did this based on the literature and also um, through expert interviews to get an idea what functionality the configurator should have. And we just stay on the first phases, so proposal and primary planning, not more. And within the scope, we now have to define a precise functionality. Therefore, we developed a click prototype to condense the ideas. So at first, it's like a pre-selection of the best practice modules, because we have a lot of best practices and you have to filter them. So based on some basic inputs product process you can select a best practice you get a list of best practice and then you did do an adaption configuration and we do this with axure a rapid prototyping tool and it was very important to condense the idea to discuss the ideas with system integrators and to get an understanding what are the needed functions what are the needed information and who also are the stakeholders because we we talked with this like to management and other people and therefore we understand what every stakeholder wants one need the correct data the other need a proposal the next one just want a clear structured information and this is very important we found out with a click prototype the next step if you know what is the scope of function then you can start with knowledge acquisition. But there are different ways to build a knowledge-based configurators. For example, we build a configurator just of three parts for simplification and explanation, and a robot, adapter plate, and gripper. There are a lot of variation, but only a few correct variations. You can build it like with a list, so you can have the lists of all correct variations, but this doesn't scale. You can also make it with rule base so if this then that but it also don't scale because you have to have rules for every details and you can do it constraint based we we do it constraint based because it's much more compact and much more condensed knowledge second step is you have to know how deep your knowledge has to go with a general rule you can like 80 20 you can get a quite good solution and you don't need the detailed formula so it's much faster. And therefore, we just focused on sometimes 80-20 rules, very general rules, but for concept planning, totally enough. Knowledge acquisition is much more faster and you can also get it faster. So the step is when you know what kind of knowledge you know, you have to think about where to get this knowledge from, especially if you don't know what kind of knowledge sources are available. So you can get in-house knowledge, you can external knowledge, which is very inexpensive, and also very, very expensive knowledge. And we focused a process documentation of a project partner, a lot of like internet forums, uh, scientific publications, or um, more industry-focused publications, standard norms, and also like exhibitions and talking to experts was a very useful knowledge source. When you know, okay, this kind of knowledge source are available, then you can say, okay, this one is very good, this one is not so good, and then you can prioritize these knowledge sources and get into the collection process. For the collection process, we published last year in SERP-E, as I mentioned on the right side, the paper 
which describes this process in more detail. Just a short summary. You start with a use case, so machine tending. Then we just acquire one best practices out of these best practices. We collect the elements, the 150% topology, what kind of components are within. And these components are used to collect constraints because every component or element has some conditions to other elements. So they are used to structure the knowledge acquisition. Out of those constraints, the attributes are derived because like if a robot has a payload or has a price, then you know, okay, you need the attributes price or payload. And then these elements are integrated. So in our use case, we use Tacton to integrate these and test it for future research projects or future projects. You can refine it because you have the 150% topology. And so you have some kind of standardization. This is validated and tested within a 3D configurator. So we build also a 3D configurator for validating the concepts and to structure the whole knowledge. It was shown that the second time we reacted the knowledge, it was much faster. It also, the onboarding of new uh, team members was much faster and the communication was much more precise. Generally, we show that the six steps are very useful and you should perform these, especially if you are doing knowledge-based engineering configurators, because these kinds of configurators are much more complex than standardized product configurators. Thank you for your attention. And if you have further questions, don't hesitate to contact me, add me in ResearchGate and LinkedIn so we can stay in touch.